Side CVO guys, take, take a look at that. I like that detail within the paint, how the metal flake comes down yeah, yeah. into it. Uh, yeah. I like the salt is, uh, perfect. All right, everybody, we just got here to Milwaukee Harley Davidson. This is our second Harley stop today here in Milwaukee. And I can tell you, they're about 12, 13 miles apart between them all. But look at all the bikes, man. I am definitely going to reiterate the 120th party is a lot better than the rally in Laconia, Laconia Harley-Davidson, shame on you. You really need to step up your game um, because this place is definitely, definitely worth the trip this year. And we got Rock Country right here. Full service car. And we got the girls with the bikinis doing their wash. I mean, come on, it's a bikini bike wash. And uh, they are beautiful. Real quick, guys. The girls are beautiful. Man, oh man. All right, the music's that way. That, we gotta try and stay away from the music. So I'm gonna turn this off. Here we are, we're walking in Milwaukee Harley Davidson, guys. Here we are. Look at this place. Well, look what I found here. The display for the new CVO. Pretty cool. Oh, they even have an upstairs. Oh, it's blocked off. You can't go up. Oh, the music's going. Sorry. I'm going to have to turn this off. All right, guys. The music stopped inside of here. So, run one real last look at what's going on here at Milwaukee Harley Davidson. We all know Milwaukee is the home of Harley. For the 120th celebration. We're here. You should be here. What a great time. There's some vendors outside and we're going to chat with them and see what's going on.
guys that's it for house of harley they got live music here no, How, I'm, I'm sorry the house of milwaukee harley davidson words are hurting me right now <laughs> but you know there's a lot of bikes here they got the live music going on so i really can't do that much recording plus there's music inside the dealer all right so now we're gonna see where else we could head to and what else here to discover here in milwaukee it's still our first day here in milwaukee we landed in milwaukee at 3 30 we got in the rental car at four and it's almost seven o'clock so we've covered some good ground so far today be going between the two dealerships here in milwaukee i'm sure there's another one because i know sanity jewelry is there I know Bexy Fuse Adventures out another one, and I gotta find those guys and, uh, you know, just have a good time. I'm having a great time. I am so glad I came. I know there's a lot of rumbling. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go. But so far, everything has panned out to having a great time. I've only been here three hours. So we're gonna see what we can find. And I'll surprise you here in just a moment of where we are and what we're doing next. Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. It's day two here in Milwaukee. We, it is early. It's not even 10 a.m. yet, and things are going on. But look where I am right now. I am at the Harley-Davidson Museum and Motor Bar. The bikes are here. They're doing, uh, I don't know what they're doing here, but we're going to find out. If you've never been to this museum, you got to go. I was here in 2019. I know I said that before, but I'm going to reiterate, you really got to go. This place is packed with bikes already. It is quite the, uh, the show of bikes. And I guess there's a parade of bikes going on today. We are here. You can see all, all the Harley Davidsons that came. But I'm not going to bore you with walking around and not doing anything. We are going to uh, take a look around and see what they offer down here before we head to different um, dealers. The other two dealers that we didn't get to last night, because to be honest with you, I was quite tired after traveling from 3 a.m., 3.15 yesterday morning, actually, until now. But... Because you know y'all ain't really got... They have a replica of the shed that the first... Harley Davidson motor was built in and here in Milwaukee. And why I say it's a replica? Because the story behind it is sad. And what happened was they used to disassemble it. They had the original, they used to disassemble it every winter because the winters here got bad just to preserve it. Well, some maintenance man found a pile of wood and ended up throwing it away. But here is the sign for the shed. The 10 by 15 foot shed located behind the Davidson's home on 38th Street, which is now uh, Highland Boulevard in Milwaukee. It was built in 1903. 
with the help of the Davidson brothers' father, who was a cabinet maker in 1906. The company moved to a larger wooden building across the street, which is site present day the company headquarters. That's pretty cool. That is pretty fucking cool. All right. I don't care what anybody says, that was pretty cool. But we're gonna... Got a couple bikes out here. They got a fast Johnny Road Glide. Cause you know what they say, no glide like a road glide. Oh, bottled waters and sodas are five bucks. That's just insane. The HD product new showroom, uh, new, uh, new product showroom. Fast Johnny, or as I like to call it, the Fast Elf. And of course, they got a limited out here with the 120th paint scheme. Look at that, that is so nice. All right, let's see if they're open. Found this old gas pump they got out here. Detroit Antique Motor Works. That is cool. They got some of the collections outside. I don't know if they're privately owned or not, but. It's a nice flathead. Uh, yeah. I got one. I got a basket in my. Girder front end on that shovel head. You can see the uh, points and condenser in there. For you new school people, you don't know what that is. Right there are your points and your condensers right there. That told your coil when to fire. And look at this knuckle head. Look at this knuckle head. Yeah. And then when he said knucklehead, I'm The that's sexiest motor Harley Davidson ever made. You're right. Revolutionary. 1930. We're going to cheat you up behind yeah. you, brother. No, no worries. We're going to turn tax. We're going to turn tax. Look that way. No, keep going. Keep going. You guys know me, man. Knuckleheads are my soft point. I love them to death. But this is a beautiful survivor. I love it. All right, guys, here is the iconic hill climber statue that was donated to the museum. And this bike looks very, very familiar. Now, I remember seeing something down here on the base somewhere where the family that donated it, their names are engraved into it. To and I'm not seeing it, so I could be wrong. It's known to happen from time to time. Nice looking road glide. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am here with Paul Crowley, his uncle, setting plans speed record. 
No, his name was Joe Petrali on a Harley Davidson back in 1937. Correct. That's awesome. Joe, tell us about your upcoming. Yeah. This is awesome. Brand speed record on a Harley Davidson on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Uh, no, that's in Daytona Beach on the uh, sand. At Daytona Beach, you guys see my video of Daytona Bike Week. It's awesome. But on the sand in Daytona, you set a land speed record. That's right. That's awesome. Tell us about it. What was you riding? Well, it was a, a special knucklehead that Harley Davidson was building to steal the record away from Indian and get it back with Harley Davidson. So they constructed this bike to fit my Uncle Joe with all the bearings. It was actually, here's something that a lot of people don't know. Before the bike was shipped from here to Florida, it was yellow. And at last minute, they decided to paint it Delphine Blue, which was their new color for that year. So that's how the bike ended up blue in Daytona. For all those who think it was yellow, it was not. Only yellow for a brief time in Milwaukee. And uh, just to let you know, that hill climber up there represents Joe Petrolli. No so, kidding. As told to us by Jeff Decker last year, he lives in Utah and we went and hung out with him. Oh, that's cool. So. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Who has possession of that iconic history-making motorcycle now? There are some parts of that actual motorcycle here. There are some parts of that motorcycle in California and the other the rest of the parts could be on eBay. I'm not sure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, none of that original motorcycle survived as a single bike. The, the parts are all over. That's, that to me, that's a bright change. If you have something so iconic, one speed, it set a land speed record to take it away from India. He did it. And to have it parted out like that, it's great that some of the parts were on here. It's great that some of the parts lived on. Completely amazing that those parts of it got together as one bike. That breaks my heart. The knucklehead is, to me, the best looking, sexiest looking motor Harley ever produced. But I've had Evos and uh, Twig Cams and Milwaukee Eights. But to me, my heart is the knucklehead. Let me ask you a question. Joe was all about speed. If he was going to have a Harley right now, what would he own? He would own my software. He would own my V-Rod. Oh, right on. <laughs> oh, right on. We'll talk more about that All offline. Right. I like the V-Rod. Uh, V-Rod muscles were great. A lot of fun, but I'm not part of my software. Oh, I hear you. Joe, it was great meeting you. Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, it's on here. Paul Petroli. <laughs> Joe Petroli was the great one. Well, I... Man. Uh, it's not a bad company to be in. No. All right, everybody, more to come inside. Okay. Guys, look at this artwork. I mean, this is legitimately a legitimate old school piece of art. You don't see this anymore. All the scrolling. The detail. That is actually beautiful. This is a nice looking chopper right here. Nice shovel head. Guys, it's just so much here to look at and see that I'm only going to highlight what I think is really special. Like, look at this chopper. This is something awesome. It's a flathead. Another flathead. This is cool. It's a nice restoration job. All right, guys, I got to end this because the music's going. So turn down for what? 
the new CVO guys. Look at that screen. That's a power inverter. Oh, that's to keep it. Uh, so so when you can turn it on, it doesn't kill the battery. That's pretty cool. But the same hand controls you find on a Pan America and the Sports Arrest, but a little bit different. Different gas cap on that. And we've got a nice little neck lock. Nice little pockets here. They might have them closed or locked for now. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I like that. What do you think? I, I love them. I like the bigger bags. Check those things yeah. out. They're wider. The new Road Glide CVO, guys. Take, take a look at that. I like that detail within the paint, how the metal flake comes down yeah, yeah. into it. Uh, yeah. I, I like the this is uh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, it is. This is nice. Looks like the windscreen has adjustable height. I'm not sure, but it certainly yeah. looks that way. Oh, there we got an air cleaner on there for stage two. I like that from Screaming Eagle. Let's take a look inside these bags. Oh, look, they color matched the fender strut covers. Instead of being black or chrome, they color match that. That's actually a trick. I like that. Integrated turn signals now with the taillights for run and brake, and then your turn is right there. The one thing I don't like is the adjuster right here for the shocks. That's the one thing I don't like about the bike. But take a look at the new screen, guys. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, here is the new motor, the VVT. They got a clear cover on it. Uh, it's hard to see. It's kind of cool. I'm digging it. Here's the new shocks. They have a, a uh, I guess a gas, you can adjust or increase or decrease the gas pressure at the shocks. Here's the cutaway. Your compression relief valve, this is where your valves would go into your, pist you know, your pistons inside of here, but this is where your valves would go. And here, you see the oil cooling route around the head. That's actually really cool to see. And the same thing up here, they're showing. That's the intake runner, I'm sorry. That's pretty cool. Oh, and the oil cooler line, which has on the M8s, is bolted in with two bolts. They went to just a threaded nipple, which I think is smart. I like that. What do you guys think of the new motor? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, we're here still at the Harley Museum. We're at the Screaming Eagle truck, or the hauler, as you can see. And we have the Wyman Brothers race bikes from the King of the Baggers. Take a look. And yes, I did get permission before I started recording. It's like our drag bike. They are running the 131R motor. This is Kyle Wyman's bike. Check this out, guys. This is awesome. You can see the difference in the seating for riding style, riding height. Look at that big air cleaner. The fast Alf. What's up, Alf? The king of the baggers is here. In Milwaukee, you gotta love it. This is pretty cool. You're just breathing. 
Then over here, we got the Saddleman team. Their bikes are here. Right on the Saddleman, man, for, you know, being here and setting up a race team as well. Three bikes. All right, guys. I got more stuff to come. I got an interview coming up. I know you guys will like that. So hang out. More to come. What's up, everybody? I'm here with Ben from Chopper's Magazine. He's here at the museum, 120th. Jerry, tell me about Chopper's Magazine. I know about it. I want my viewers to know about it. No, Chopper's Magazine is actually the, the very first custom motorcycle magazine ever made. It was started in 1967 by Ed Roth. You all know Ed Roth is. Big Daddy Ed Roth. Uh, he ran it, he ran small magazines for a while. Um, he got out of the business in the early 70s and then it kind of sat stagnant for a while and then someone else brought it back and it was a full size a publishing company brought it back. And it died somewhere in the late 70s, it just sat stagnant. So I used to work for Easy Riders for a long time. Right. I didn't like the direction they were going. I decided to start my own magazine. So during all the research, I found that this was available, that I could use it with the permission of the Roth family. So got in touch with them. Uh, they gave me their blessing, and that's it. Now, so I brought you, it back. Now, if you guys aren't familiar who Ed Roth is, you've seen my videos at the Motorcyclopedia Museum in Newburgh, New York. A lot of those custom bikes that are out there, I mean, out there with design, with everything that makes a beautiful piece of rolling artwork, that's Ed Roth. Yeah, he did a lot of cars too. Yep. A lot of cars, a lot of bikes. The Rat Fate, he's most famous for the Rat Fate. Yep. So. As, as a yeah. matter of fact, Motorcyclopedia's got a lot of his cars yeah. here too. Have you ever been to that museum in New Bergen, New York? No, I have not. You've got to make it because it's worth it. The, uh, Ted, who owns Ted Cycle and Beach Wind Manufacturing, that's his museum. Okay. It's a really cool place to go for today. If you're ever in the New York area, it might be out there. I've been a subscriber to it when it was available. I have seen it. Um, I've had family members bikes in um, magazines before, like Easy Rider, uh, Long Rider Pete built a bike for my cousins. I don't know Long Rider Pete out of Connecticut, Chopper Cody. No, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a SoCal guy. So SoCal. We're, yeah, so we're, we're, on, we're on the West, West Coast. Coast. We're on the West Coast, and uh, that's you know where Easy Rider's office was. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, right on. So, it's a magazine, it's still available, correct? Still available, yeah. Is it subscription based or all online? Or? It's all, we, no, no, you can, it's a printed magazine. Um, we do a digital copy as well. Uh, we do about four to six issues a year. Nice. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a passion project for me. It's not really a... Uh, Financial, it's not yeah, the greatest financial one. decision yeah, to bring a magazine out in the age of the internet. Yep, yep. But I'm 51 and I love magazines. I'm 53, I enjoy flipping the pages, looking at it, smell of it. My friend, we're going to go to the future. He built a beautiful chopper, I was a badass. Yeah, badass chopper. Pretty badass. It's called Proud Chip. Check it out. Check it out. You know? And guys, check out Chopper's Mag. You can find you on Instagram. Instagram, Chopper's Magazine. Uh, choppersmagazine.com. We kept it simple. Yeah. Easy to find. Check them out. Give them a follow on Instagram. I'm going to be redoing my description. I'm going to be doing six magazines a year. I thought you guys were going. So I'm going to renew my subscription. Headed out west coast. That's Dave Dan. Dave Dan, yep. Yeah. So your magazine's going to hit the west coast. Yep. West coast, east coast, east coast. Yeah, no, we got, we got, we, we feature bikes from across the country and even from other countries. So yeah, right on. We're not just a SoCal magazine. Nice. So guys, check it out. This is Corey, owner, operator of Chopper Mag. Get on it. Thanks. Our Davidson, 120. That's it, 120. All right, guys. 
that'll do it for us here. It's right around noontime here on Saturday. There's a couple other places we're gonna head to that are done at four. So we're gonna end it here at the Harley Davidson Museum. All right, guys, live the best life you can. As always, ride hard and ride often. Like and subscribe.